Okay, thank you very much. I use biomechanics to look at human interaction with the environment, machines, and tools. And here's a case of some of the work we do with ice hockey. We look at sticks, we look at skates, we also look at helmets, and I'll just spend a few moments talking about our helmet work, and specifically concussions. Concussions in terms of and evaluate in terms of the incidents. We often understand the etiology, the mechanisms involved. What, how can we prevent those? And then how do we do iterative cycles within that? So in terms of that, we see that some of the evidence there that 1.6 to 3.8 million sport types of MTBIs, mild traumatic brain injuries, can occur annually. We see that it's rising in hockey, like notably in Crosby and others. And that if we look at incidence rates of MTBI compared to Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis, that we do see that it is a public health concern. So know that it has a rationale for looking further, try to identify what actually causes this. And here's some evidence based in terms of this model looking at acceleration on the one axis and time in milliseconds in the other. This was based on animal cadaver testing. The line represents sort of the threshold between injury and safety. So above that curve and to the right would be an injury condition. So we can see that acceleration might be one of the key measures in terms of understanding head injury mechanics. If we look at the left of the diagram there, we can do surrogate testing with a cranial form. We can introduce certain protective devices as helmets and see how we can modify the acceleration peak without to the, a lower value when you introduce certain devices. Okay, so concussions in sport, yes, it's a problem. Is the acceleration criteria that we currently use for helmets, is it a means in terms of protecting or preventing all injuries? No. So there has to be some other values other than acceleration that might do that, particularly since we, we're modeling the head here and these impacts is rigid, but we know the brain is a viscoelastic material. So there has to be something else that could be done. And here's one case study that... Uh, PhD student Ryan Nuka and I are looking at, we have a head form, the same as before, we put a, a matrix of four sensors, we can drop impact that, in this case onto the front of the head form, and we can map out then dynamically the impact response, and what we're seeing here is occurring over 10 milliseconds, something that normally couldn't be captured by other techniques. So that was looking at a very focal impact response, if we introduce a helmet here and there's the matrix and the phantom image below, we can see that the helmet shell and its foam will modify the dispersion patterns of that. That was one helmet. Here's another. So you can see we have a different, in this case sort of a bimodal focal pattern. Here's another helmet. So the red indicating where the high focal peak forces are occurring. Here's yet another helmet model within that. So definitely we can introduce things that will modify that. What's the optimal design is yet to be determined. We can take values, this is a rather busy graph, but basically it's looking at different helmet models, one to five, over different sort of peak acceleration forces. We see that we can map out the mechanical behavior of those and to understand then how to bed you know, we can build better mouse traps, but then come along better mouses. So it's definitely an evolving field that iteratively will work at in terms of understanding and reducing the severity and prevalence of concussions. Thank you.